I am doing something completely new today that I have never tried before. We are making pixelated art with wooden squares. Now this idea obviously isn't completely new to the internet, but this is something I definitely have never tried. So let's bust these squares out, get them painted, and create something. There's a ton of squares in here too. It says there's 400. Not sure if we will use all of them, but let's just open this up. A bag inside of a bag. So something I noticed about these already, they're not perfectly square. So we're gonna have like slightly rectangle pixels, whatever, <laughs> it's okay. Does anybody else sniff their art supplies a lot? Here's the wooden pieces. So something actually inspired me to do this art project and I'm so excited to tell you about it, but it is a game called Widoku and they are very kindly sponsoring this video. So let me tell you about it. If you are a creative and visual person, I think you will love this game because this is a wooden block game meets Sudoku. So you have the option to do a daily challenge, which is where you collect gems as you clear the board. You can also play on classic mode, which is my personal favorite. It is super common and then you can go on journeys and travel throughout the game. So let's start a new game. You have to basically form a line with your blocks or you can fill a whole quadrant on the board and that will clear that area. I really like this because I just like calming visual games where I can recognize patterns. See, boom, we cleared a line. <laughs> There are hundreds of different challenging levels in this game, so as you move up, you know your brain juice is going. And I just, I love that about games. I feel like I'm getting a lot out of it when I can do that sort of thing. Now the cool thing about this too is there are different shapes here at the bottom, and those are the three that you have to use before you get new ones. And if you cannot fit them, Game over. Game over. You have to start over. The nice thing about Wodoku too is it is completely free to download and play. There are no purchases necessary. And with that, you can enjoy the three different playing modes that I mentioned, the hundreds of different levels. I really like how it's challenging and relaxing at the same time. And when I'm doing art, a lot of the times I take little breaks to peek at my phone, you know? And this kind of stuff, really great way to reset. And as I said, this game inspired me to make a painting that you're about to see. And I'm really excited to share that with you. So if you would like to try out Wodoku, please click the link in the video description to download it. Or you can use this QR code right here on the screen. It's available on Android and iOS. Make sure you click that link to download it because it really helps my channel. Or again, you can use this QR code here on the screen. Thank you so much Wodoku for sponsoring this and for inspiring me to do this sweet art project. Let's hop back into it. Okay, let's, oh, I don't know if I should dump all of these out. This is gonna be a mess. I don't even know how many of these I'm gonna use. That's the hard thing. This is a sensory experience. I love it. I have a bunch of them out. I already know what I wanna do. I've been thinking about it for a while, so. I just need to paint these. I would love to spray paint these. However, I would like to use the supplies that I already have so I'm not being wasteful. And I don't think it really makes sense for me to go out and buy spray paint for a project and then never use the spray paint again, probably. So we're just gonna paint them by hand. It'll take some time, but that's okay. I have other YouTubers to catch up on. <laughs> I have this paint here. I know I have a crusty palette somewhere. I do. Let's just get started painting all of this. I will set it aside in piles and then you can find out what I'm creating. But for now, this is gonna be a complete surprise. <laughs> you have to wait and see. What is a good paintbrush for painting tons of wooden squares? Ooh, this is a good one. This one. I'm just grabbing a couple. What in the world? Guys, that's a scam if I've ever seen one. Is this like the side of the tree or is this a burn mark? It's tree bark. <laughs> Kinda cool though. This is gonna take a long time and I'm so excited for it. 
I think a fair amount of these need to be like really dark blue. So the first thing I did was lay all these blocks out. And in my mind, I already knew exactly what I wanted to paint. I knew I needed a limited color palette for this. But the only thing I didn't really plan out was like how many of each block to do. I just kind of went with it. But this was so peaceful and it was also kind of challenging because the planning ahead part. There were some patterns and stuff that I had to make sure worked at the end, which you'll see what I mean in a little bit. But the first thing here that I am doing is just going in with Payne's gray with a little bit of white. I wanted a dark blue for this. So they're all painted. Let's move on to a new color. I decided to do a lighter blue because that limited color palette. Ooh, I feel so suspicious right now too because I can't actually tell you what I'm painting yet until we get a little further. But if you're curious about how long it took to paint all of these blocks, it may have actually been more worth my time to spray paint them. But I'm actually proud because I used up things that I already have in my studio and I'm trying to be less wasteful. So I'm glad I actually just spent the time to do this. It was really therapeutic anyway. So yeah, I think this probably took me I don't know, like six hours or so just to paint all of these little blocks, <laughs> which is just amazing because I didn't even do like shading or anything, but that's all right. I had to let the tops of them dry and then I went around and painted the edges, which is a little silly because that's not gonna be like the focal point if they're next to each other. But I figured if there was even a slight gap in between like two blocks, I would not want the wood to be showing. I would want like the full color of the block to be showing. And I'm glad I did that because at the end there were a couple gaps. So yeah, I have dark blue, like a lighter blue, red, white, copper, and like a peachy color. Those are the colors we have to work with. Right now, I'm kind of just testing out part of the design on the middle of this piece and changing things up in my mind a little bit. So you can maybe tell what's going on. I'm painting a mushroom, assembling a mushroom, because I already did the painting part, actually. Anyway, it's a giant mushroom. <laughs> this was fun. I had to figure out how I wanted to do the spots on the mushroom, and then I had to work out the shape of the cap on the mushroom. And yeah, how I saw it in my mind and how it came out physically, were two different things, honestly. So here you're just seeing me put it together and then do a couple different iterations. Like I had some plus signs with pixels and then I changed it up to like these four squares because I thought it looked better. So after a couple iterations of this mushroom, <laughs> which took way longer than I thought it would, we're gonna bust out the glue. We're gonna glue this stuff down. Let me show you what I'm about to use. I'm just gonna use this tacky glue for the next part and glue everything down. And then I'm gonna start doing the design around the mushroom. It's gonna be fun. So here starts the gluing stage. Believe me, I definitely had my favorite YouTubers going. I had Netflix shows going, all of that while I did this entire project because this, as simple as it appears here on screen, was a very tedious, very time consuming process. As I said, just painting these blocks alone was probably like six hours. And then I had to glue them down and arrange them, do multiple iterations to make sure it all worked out on the surface. And yeah, here we are gluing it now. It was really cool seeing this come to life though because this is something that has been living inside my mind for probably like three weeks, honestly. <laughs> and I wanted to get it out. And 
You folks know I have been working on a lot of like painting collections and stuff and usually after I do a lot of huge projects, I like to switch things up and do new things like this just for fun. I think there's just so much art in the world to be enjoyed and admired that I want to experience them all, you know? Whether it be abstract art and paint pouring or ceramics and just all that stuff, I just think all types of art are beautiful. And so here I am trying pixelated art with wooden blocks. <laughs> this was just so relaxing too. I mean, I didn't have to do shading. I didn't have to do crazy details. It was just a very repetitive thing. But then when you zoom out and look at the big picture, there's a picture, you know? So yeah, this is the part two where I started to do the pattern on the border of the painting. And it took some playing around with because what I saw in my head and what came out didn't quite work out, but that was okay because I made it work. And that's what you have to do. You have to pivot as an artist. If things don't work out, you just pivot. And I'm glad I kept going. I just, I really, really wanted a checkerboard pattern to go around the edges. And I wanted the corners to all stand out. In my mind, it was a lot bigger than this, but I felt like I should stop here. <laughs> I also was really into the idea of adding a little bit of that copper color because I just think copper with like dark greens or blues or grays or blacks, you know, just looks so good. And so this was such a good opportunity to make that happen. So my question of the day for you folks, have you ever tried pixel art? And if so, how did it go? Did you do it again afterward? Did you use like wooden blocks or did you do like a grid method on paper and just color it in? How did you do it? Let me know. I really enjoyed this. I'm so glad I tried it. It is always such a blessing to just try a new thing. And you know, for some artists, this is all they do. This is their passion to do pixelated art. So I'm glad I got to experience this and to be able to relate to artists who really enjoy doing this type of thing. I enjoyed it, I respect it a lot. Folks, the mushroom piece is complete. I did some little things off camera to update it a little bit. So I'm gonna show it to you now. Here it is. Ooh, look at that copper paint glisten. <laughs> so what I did, you can see the back here has this piece of felt. I did that to hold this string here because I wanted it to hang, but also I felt like the whole sheet would just sort of reinforce this to be a little more sturdy. Now it can hang like this. Anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed making this. I think that it would be really cool to try some sort of like botanical design with this, with like leaves or flowers. I don't know. We'll see in the future maybe. But yeah, this entire thing was inspired by Wadoku and I really enjoyed just planning this piece out in my head and fitting it all together. I think the planning actually took longer than putting all of this together because you know I had to paint them, count them, make sure this checkerboard pattern worked out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I tried a new art thing. Once again, if you would like to try Wadoku, I will leave a QR code right here and I will link it in the video description. It is a completely free game to download and play so you can enjoy it as much as you want. Exercise that brain of yours, exercise your creative side and have fun. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I will see you soon in another video. Bye.